Hi, fishy folks, and happy Fry Fry Friday to you. Michael from Michael's Fish Room here. Don't forget to check out michaelsfishroom.com to buy any of the fish you see here in this video. So it's Fry Fry Friday. I thought I'd show you some fry. Uh, Wednesday's video was uh, all about how I feed fry, so I figured I'd show you what we got for fry in the fish room. Obviously, there's about 150,000 of these black Moscow fry. Uh, it looks like there's about three different drops in here. I think I have uh, one or two large females left. There's one and one's probably hiding. And then a couple of uh, other juvenile females that probably haven't given birth yet. But uh, as you know, guppies can give birth approximately every 30 days. Uh, once they're impregnated by a male, they don't ever really need a male again. But to be more productive, I would say there should be a male. I've, uh, in some of my tanks, I take... Uh, I put one male into three or four females for maybe a week, and then I pull the male out for like two or three months. Then I put the male back in, and that seems to be increasing my fry production. So, black Moscow fry, not on the website yet, um, but that's what they're going to look like when they're adults. There's a solid black one. Actually, if I go up to the all male guppy tank, you can see that's a spectacular specimen of a black Moscow fry. Or. Er, black Moscow male adult all right fishy folks now we have the American purple Delta tank and you can see there's some fry in there sorry the tanks so dirty it's kind of a spur of the moment filming um, on a Friday I've been super busy at work I didn't have a chance to uh, make videos this week like I usually want to so uh, in here we have steel nebula females and there's a couple of males I mean a couple of babies a couple of fry but uh, really not a whole lot going on in here I kind of have to do some uh, some work and see what's going on so uh, oh there's the uh, red tux fry you can see them on the bottom just chilling this is called colony breeding where there's a poop ton of fish in a tank and uh, lots of hiding places for the babies to to hide in <coughs> as I've said in about a hundred other videos uh, I use Java moss or some other floating plant in this case there's Rickia up here and then there's uh, water wisteria or water sprite sorry and didn't mean to scare the fish and lots of Java moss and what that does oh look at all the reflection it's that's gonna be a great video for you guys um, what the moss and the plants do is not only does it give a place for the fish to hide in and give birth and the fry to hide in until they're big enough to venture out, but also they eat the microfilm and microorganisms in and on all that plant material. So that's, that's good stuff. Um, let's see some more tanks with a poop ton of fry. I have actually some fry tanks. Um, this is going to be quickly going to become a problem. <laughs> It's a 10 gallon tank there's about 3,572 million fish in here and uh, I counted and uh, no uh, I, I'm gonna try you know I think I've said in a recent video that oh it's not that big a deal because I have automatic water changes and you know I'm changing like 20 or 30 percent of the water you can see there's two water lines I have to the tank but uh, it, the reality is it's packed in there and I probably should try to try to uh, fix it you can see there's a female with a bent tail a bent back you know that happens from their big their big uh tails and stuff so yeah i'm gonna have to probably take care of her uh by culling her and uh if you guys don't want to hear about it then don't listen but she'll just go right in the oscar tank and it'll be over quite quickly so uh if you think that's inhumane i'm sorry but you know it's the circle of life great movie too uh, where else do we have a ton of fry? This tank, this is the um, pink pastel, pink panda platy tank. Pink panda platy tank, yeah. And you can see there's little tiny fry in there too. That's guppy fry. If you remember about a month ago, uh, I had the American guppies in here, the red, white, and blue American guppies in here just to hold them. And I pulled what I thought was everybody out and put them in their own tank and lo and behold I forgot a female and she dropped fry while she was in here and most of the fry survived which I was surprised they were tiny and I thought like these big platies would eat them but 
most of the uh, fry survive. So now I'm just letting them grow up till it's easier to catch, and then I'll pull them out. Uh, they're not gonna crossbreed. They're not gonna be eaten. They're just, it's basically just, you know, a tank for fry. You can see there's one uh, um, algae wafer, which isn't an algae, it's a kelp wafer from Northfin that I got from Lisa at Super Cichlids. Check out supercichlids.com. I'm sure they're offering some sale right now. But uh, there's one Selfin Pleco in the back. I think it's an L066. I gotta remember, but that's also going on in here. Uh, oh, Pleco Fry. Not my Pleco Fry, not yet, but albino plecos, albino bristlenose plecos. There's three of them in here. Let's see, there's one down there, there's one over there, and there's one over there. And this tank, uh, I, I gotta really be careful what I feed. They're so small they don't eat. You can see there's some rotting uh, uh, food that I, from yesterday they gotta take out, and I will take that out as soon as we're done. These guys aren't growing very fast. I don't know why. Um, it's kind of my first time with uh, plecos this small, and I'm trying to feed them without clouding the water and, and getting the water dirty by leaving stuff like that in there, so. This tank is gonna be tricky when I leave for Japan because I have to rely on my sons to feed and I'm relatively sure they're not gonna clean up after them. So, gotta be a little careful. So, we'll see what goes on there. All right, more Fry Fry Friday tank update. These are the Jade Head Red Tux guppies. Uh, they are not on the website yet. I did raise them and sell them at uh, the NEC show, sold quite a few came home this is a tank with no males in it by the way I took all the males out and you can see how many fry there are um, and you can see some of the juveniles are growing up so they're they're cobra guppies uh, with like a green head and uh, a red and black body sort of kind of so that's really not a good representation I think that baby's gonna change color a little bit as it grows older if not then they're not breeding true anymore so I'm gonna have to take a peek uh, what do we got here? <clears throat> These are a project of mine. Hyphen Swordtails. Hyphen Red Tuck Swordtails. Um, I got five or six at an auction and uh, lo and behold, and they were small, and lo and behold they were all females. And so I had my local fish store buy uh, some males, or buy some more, and I bought a male from him, and uh, He's not actually 100% the same, so we'll see how the babies come out, but you can see there's some fry in here. Uh, sword tails are a little bit more aggressive, I think, in eating their fry than other live bears, just my opinion. No scientific fact there, again, just my opinion. And so, you know, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe 10 fry, when maybe if it was a guppy tank, there'd be 20 or 30, so I'm sure there's some more fry hiding I just can't see, but I actually don't even see the male right now. And you can see there's one neon swordtail in the back, neon hyphen, that was in, in the pack that I got. So, uh, fry, fry, fry. Oh, let's go over here. This is also another experiment of mine. I took a ginormous female out of the black panda guppy tank and put her in this 10 gallon and she has had two drops in about, um, I'd say about seven weeks. Not, well, she was in here for about three weeks with nothing. So within about seven weeks, she's had two drops. So about 10 to 11 weeks she's been in here. And uh, I'm just letting everybody grow up in here and uh, her do her thing. You know, we'll see what happens. So lots of black panda frying here. And uh, while we're here, we'll take a look at the red dragon tank. I just recently put a heater in this tank because I need to get some more males. I have found, again, another unscientific study that if you heat the tanks to about 75, 76 or more, you get more males than, more male production from fry. Not more males than females, but if the tanks stay room temperature, which is about 70, then I get, I'd say, 90% females. With the heater, you get probably about 55 60 percent female so much better ratio maybe not that high maybe 70 percent female so you get about 30 percent more males so i'm rambling because it's math and it's no coffee time so 
These are, like I said, the Red Dragon Fry. Uh, I got these from Super Breeder Steve, who I haven't seen in quite a while. He wasn't at the last auction, and because uh, he's been working, so I have to get back in touch with him and see if I can get a couple males in here, because I probably am going to need some. Uh, Fry Fry Friday continues. These um, albino quarries, they weren't fry when I got them, but they were tiny. So they've grown quite a bit. I oh, really feed this tank a lot to get them to, to fatten up. So they're getting there. I'm a little surprised these purple mosaic dumbware sulfur head guppies haven't dropped fry yet. There's two ginormous females there. Um, I'm relatively confident I have enough cover for them to hide. There are some uh, trimmings from my sore plant that I got at the auction. There's java moss, there's rickia. I mean, there's enough in here for a female to go drop fry and hide. And uh, you can see some of the debris that's falling from feeding. That's another kind of trick. If you have tank with a lot of plant coverage in it, a breeding tank, so there's a lot of floating stuff, eh, every couple of days you should definitely, you know, just kind of move around the top layer to drop all that stuff. So, uh, where? Oh, look at that. Green Dragon Pleco Fry. That's right. Yay. There's three of them. Long fins, too. Um, so hopefully they'll grow up and I'll get a pair and boom, chicka, boom, boom. But we'll see. Uh, lots of fry in Michael's fish room. I don't think you need to see them all, but, you know, we can take a look here. Are some of the... Uh, I forgot what they call these. I forgot what we call them. Anyway, lots of fry in there. That wasn't a good description, was it? These is This is a Cobra Guppy tank, and there's quite a few fry. In fact, there are no more adults, just fry in here. Um, I've been selling a lot of these guys, so. Luckily for me, I have two, two tanks of these, plus another tank of just reds. These are reds and greens. If you know anything about guppies, red and green covers are pretty much the same. They just throw different colors, red being the more dominant color usually than any other color. Here's another uh, Cobra Fry tank that's sort of becoming a little bit of a, a mutt tank. You can see there's like a what appears to be a blue diamond cross in there. Um, so I'll pull him out and put him in the mutt tank. That's a good looking fish. So, all right, fishy folks. I think that's it for the uh, for the Fry Fry Friday tour. I know he's not a fry, but there's a calico bristle nose male. I think it's a male based on those bristles. Uh, so we'll see. Just hanging out on the glass, chilling. There's another one back in the corner, which you probably can't see because they like to hide. So I'm going to call that uh, that big guppy with the really bent tail. And I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. And uh, don't forget to check out Michael's Fish Room. And you'll probably see me at least one more time before I leave for Japan. So see ya.